Jacob Conover. I'm 15 years old, oldest child of four, and son to Jason and Michelle Conover. When I first started writing, I was going to use the Bible verse, Genesis 1-1, but I thought that it might not be the best verse for this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Don't get me wrong, it's a very inspirational verse. I just thought I should use something better like John 3-16 or Romans 12-2. But I decided on Jeremiah 29-11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I like this verse because it makes me feel protected, knowing that he has a plan for me. If I ever feel down or sad, I like to just read this verse. In order to be a better Christian, in order to the big man upstairs, I want to help give back to my community and spread his word. I just haven't figured out how I'm going to do that. I have an idea, that's the, but that's all it is. I have this story from the Bible. It's 1 Samuel 17. You might know it. It involves this guy named David and this other guy named Goliath. If you don't know, it's basically Goliath and his fellow soldiers were challenging the king, Saul. Everyone was terrified of Goliath and didn't want to fight him. David, a young teenager, volunteered to fight Goliath. At first the king refused, but at, but at the end agreed to let him fight Goliath. David confronted Goliath with only the weapons, a slingshot, and a few rounds. Before fighting, David prayed to the Lord to help him. Then David aimed, aimed his slingshot at Goliath's head and killed him. I like this story because I see it as more than just a fight, but it has an idea as no matter who you are, how big you are, or how much money you, you have, you don't control your life. God has a plan, and it's better just to accept it and love it than try and fight it. There's another verse I like to read every now and then. 1 Corinthians 13, 2. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am not. This is one of my favorites because I'm a strong believer of love conquers all. I've heard people say everything happens for a reason. I believe that, but there are some things I don't like. I don't like when I hear about a school shooting or the death of a child. God has a plan for everyone, but why does that have to happen? I've had trouble with stuff like this before, and as I grow in my faith, I hope to understand, or at least try to understand, what part of the grand plan that those things are a part of. I believe that Jesus Christ lived and walked on earth, so it's easy to believe in him, because I know what happened and the miracles that he made possible, but faith is the tricky thing. Believing in the Creator because there is no proven record, it completely relies on faith alone. As you can see, I'm still figuring my faith out, but I'm very happy to be figuring it out in a church like Grace Lutheran with all of you. I think faith is something you can't really describe. I think 
try to honor these things. I may not just succeed all the time, but I try my best to follow them. When I was in seventh grade, I decided to join our school as a thinking it would be relatively easy, and it wouldn't require me to do a lot of work. After about the first week or so, I started to realize that dance is actually extremely difficult, and that every day would be harder than the last. It takes a lot of time and dedication to learn how to dance and do it correctly. You also have Passion isn't something you can see, but just comes naturally after a while, which made me pick this verse. Second Corinthians 5 7. We believe by faith, not by sight. You can't see God. You can't see what He has done for you or what He will do for you. We pray to a God who can't see. We do this because we believe in Him. We don't sit there and hope for a miracle. We believe that we are in God's hands, and no matter what, He knows what is right, and everything will be the way. Everything will be the way it is meant to be. We believe even though we're not saved. In a way, this kind of relates to life. I think faith is something you have your entire life, and it takes some time to understand what it means to you without seeing it. When you finally grasp what your faith is and what it really means to you, it can take you to great places. Once you understand it, you can grow in your faith and grow closer and closer to God. I believe faith is something God helps you to understand. It takes some time to figure out what it means to you. It doesn't just come with a manual or a set of instructions to help you out. I know I have said this many times already that I'm not sure what my faith is yet, but that doesn't mean I don't rely on it sometimes. I have gone through some pretty rough times, like in 2010, my mom lost her dad, and then two months after that, my grandpa, and then two months after that, my other I needed my faith then to understand why so many bad things were happening. Confessing your sins 
is my faith statement. My favorite Bible verse is Isaiah 43, verse 1. I am talking by name.
shows love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It is not rude, it is not self seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. I like this verse because it tells us that no matter what we do, God still loves us. It says that love is an action, not an emotion. This verse also tells us that God wants us to give our love to others. He wants us to share our love with all around us. I always know I'm loved by God. I grew up in a Christian household and I've always been in grace with her. I went to Sunday school from preschool to sixth grade and then I started confirmation. My parents woke me up and got me ready even if I didn't want to go because they wanted me to understand and develop my faith in God. My family had a big influence on my faith and I still do today. They always left the church and encouraged me to go on church trips, like the mission trip, the coffee tour, and most recently the youth camp. I've gone on many trips to the church the last couple of years. Two years ago, we went to Pine Ridge Indian Reservation to do mission work for Wakoda Indians. We spent five days running a daycare, building on houses for the people who don't have running water, and painting their homes. That was my first real experience being close to God. At the end of the summer, my mom was the God to her. That week, I felt the closest to God that I ever felt because of the worship, devotions, and church services we did every day. We were always immersed in our faith, and we started to come back to our lives after. It was hard to maintain the same closeness to God and each other that we had experienced the past week. I was lucky enough to have a second trip this summer from the National Youth Gathering in Detroit. It was great to see 30,000 other Christians from all over the country in the same place. There were all pastors from all over, all over the country with vastly different opinions. They talked about issues such as racism and gang violence and how people suffer from it. We then did a service project picking up an alleyway in one of the tougher parts of Detroit. It was an eye-opening, it was eye-opening to see the poverty. We helped clean up and trim their overgrown house base because they were too old to care for it themselves. It was a great feeling to know that we could help these people in some small ways. God tells us to share our love with others, and we are blessed to share it with the people of Detroit. My faith has helped me in my life, and I hope I can continue to understand and grow in the years to come. Yeah. 